So now that we know that a solution exists, the next question that we might ask ourselves is whether this solution is unique. Is there only one solution that satisfies uh, this equation? And again, the property that we'll be interested in that we're going to need is the property of course, a coercivity of our bilinear form. Now, this one I'll actually prove because it's relatively straightforward. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to assume that it's not true, it's not unique. So we have two different solutions that satisfy uh, the above relation. And then we'll show that this is actually not possible uh, if our bilinear form is coercive. So suppose that we have two solutions. u1 and u2 that solve b u w is equal to l w for all w in h10 Now we're going to show that if we have two of those solutions, then we actually have a conflict here, and, and that cannot be true. Uh, so apparently we do not have two solutions. Uh, and the way that we'll do this is by taking this equation, which has to be satisfied both for u1 and for u2 in place of this u, and we're going to sub subtract these two equations from one another. So subtract the two equations and then we obtain that b u1 w minus b u2 w is going to be equal to l w minus well, l w for all w yes so this is going to be equal to zero now due to the the linearity the bilinearity we can rewrite this we can collapse these into one slot and we obtain u1 minus u2. Yeah, so we're, we're only allowed to do this because of the, uh, the linearity of our bilinear form. And then this is going to be equal to 0. So then, this and this has to be equal to 0 for all functions w in h10. And we also know that u1 and u2 both live in h10. So in order to show that there's a conflict, I'll choose a particular test function, w. I'll choose one particular choice. And the choice that I'll make is w is equal to u1 minus u2. Now, let's be clear. This has to be true for all possible choices, w. So it also has to be, tr be true for this, cho uh, this choice because u1 minus u2, well, it certainly lives in u in h10, uh, because both u1 and u2 live in h10. h10 is a vector space, meaning that any linear combination of its elements is also an element, uh, so that uh, u1 minus u2 also has to be in h10, uh, so that we can choose w to be equal to u1 minus u2. So with that choice, that above statement says that b u1 minus u2 u1 minus u2 is equal to 0. And now we have a little bit of a conflict, because by definition of our coercivity of a bilinear form, if we have the same function in both slots, then it has to be larger than or equal to cc times the norm of that function. And again, cc has to be larger than 0. So the only way that if I substitute both in both slots the same function and the result is going to be zero. The only way that that's going to be true if, is if the function that I substitute in both slots is equal to zero. So due to the coercivity of B, this means that u1 minus u2 is equal to 0. Yeah, because only then uh, can I get a 0 on the right-hand side because the norm 
of the zero function is equal to zero. Which means that uh, u1 is equal to u2, and in fact, they're the both, uh, they're, the, they're the same solution. Yeah, so the assumption, the, uh, the, the starting assumption that there are two solutions, uh, u1 and u2, uh, with a coercive bilinear form, ends up having to mean that those two solutions are equal to one another. Uh, so in fact, we only have one solution. So, uh, And hence, the solution is unique. Okay, so I think this is a relatively straightforward proof, uh, but I think this is one of those typical proofs that are very useful to, to kind of know by heart. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It's uh, kind of a, a regular set of steps that we will probably go through a couple of times in this class. And uh, it helps you really understand uh, what's going on here. And again, we see that coercivity is the important property that, uh, that we need uh, to prove uh, uniqueness of, of a solution. Okay, and in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, stability.